not finding investors to put a to put an amateur team in Canada that can play in a league. That you know, why is they not in talks with the USARL to try and get Canadian teams into the USARL competition? A competition that now, to be fair to it, it's fairly well established. Yeah, it's fairly consistent now that they get teams on the pitch week in week out through the season that have, okay not necessarily the highest level of, of, of skill or execution sometimes, but entertaining, exciting athletic games put on the pitch every week throughout their season. Um, there's very few cancellations nowadays in that competition. There's very few teams that turn up with like 12 men squads and stuff like that these days in that yeah. competition. It, 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 it's growing and they are increasing the amount of teams like every other year really in the last five years or so. So why can't we get that side of things replicated through Eric Perez's love and enthusiasm for rugby league in Canada to help support Toronto and the Wolverines national side to 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 become better. That's what I would want to see happening in Canada, whereas New York feels like a more natural step because we've already got, you know, all those teams in that sort of geographic location that can at least feed something towards the New York franchise, even though they want to go go big time, they don't want to deny American talent, North American talent, an opportunity. Just like the Wolfpack didn't want to. They tried, didn't they? They tried to get people in. It just was clear that for them to meet their immediate ambitions, those players couldn't be with them in their squad long term. Yeah. What, isn't clear is what is happening around the Wolfpack to make sure that in 10 years time that pathway will exist and Ottawa to me are just going to be the you know another thing that happened and it's great to have an extra team from that region it does swell interest it does swell column inches um, I'm sure but Ottawa doesn't feel like the right move for me it feels like Ontario should have been had an Ontario Rugby League competition that could feed through. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's 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 my take on how it, on, on how I would do expansion. I'd have New York at the top table sooner than I'd have had Ottawa, and maybe even my doubts about Eric Perez combined with the fact that he's been involved recently with the Bradford Bulls debacle. Indeed. Indeed. Anything more from you on sort of North American expansion? <laughs> No, let's. Uh, we've got plenty to talk about, so let's 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 move on. Okay, then shout outs. Uh, thanks to David Powell and David Cantrell for their wonderfully kind donations to the Super League Pod Coffers this week. It's hugely appreciated. Um, so thanks to those guys for that. Uh, and that is it for our opening section, our longest opening section for a while, because we wanted to give that good chat about North American expansion. Two pro expansionists talking about it, cautiously pro expansion yes. um so uh, obviously that's not giving a, a fully balanced view of those anti-expansionists that we know are part of our community too so um we'd love to hear from them because we don't know what else we're going to have to talk about over the next <laughs> few, few weeks but um we're now going to move on to what we are calling the wash your bed sheets news section before we get to the main news section <laughs> So, the news section this week is going to start with us talking about a match because, let's face it, the 15 minutes after this match generated one of the biggest news stories so far in the Super League season and one of the most sort of strangest things we've experienced, something we've, something we've not experienced before. And that game, of course, was Thursday night's game, Hull FC hosting the Warrington Wolves. It was 12-4 to Warrington at half-time and things then just got woefully worse for the black and whites. It finished up... 38-4 with a last second consolation being scored by Hull FC in front of 10,214. Chris Kendall back in his rightful Thursday night spot. Mr. Thursday night, yeah. For this one. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, in terms of uh, the stats, Wire had 225 more metres and made six more breaks in an 11-5 to break count, as well as 14 more offloads in a winning attacking display. Oddly, Wire also made an extra error, conceded four more penalties, and had a slightly worse team tackle success rate. I actually think those negative stats for the Wire 
show how poor FC <laughs> were that they couldn't take advantage of those kind of situations. Um, individually, Toby King, two try assists, 120 metres, three successful offloads. Chris Hill, 118 metres. Daryl Clark off the bench was fantastic, I thought. Two try assists, 117 metres and five successful offloads. And Ben murdoch Mastilla with a try and 107 metres. There were some bright sparks for Hull FC. It wasn't all uh, negatives for them. Carlos Tumavavi found a lot of space. Five tackle bus, 246 metres and two clean breaks. Josh Griffin had a try assist and 120 metres. Albert Kelly did a lot of running, 122 metres. And Danny Houghton, yeah, mate, 54 tackles, 10 of which were marker tackles. What else would you expect from him? Moaning maybe at the play of the ball. But otherwise, what else would you expect <laughs> from him? Loads, fucking loads of fan views <laughs> on this game. I mean, I think every rugby league fan and SLP follower in the country was uh, staying in on Thursday night to, to watch this one. So, do you want to give us the first of them and we'll manage to get through all of them? Yeah, so first first off the blocks was Josh and he said, um, I always enjoyed the Radford hockey Kirky. In, out, wonder when it's just the shake it all about. My God, that was a dreadful watch. Um, by no means were wire good. The scoreline flatters them. Um, look forward to hearing some highlights from Rose Tinted Glasses. I didn't see any. <laughs> POB 1976. Um with a farewell appearance from that Twitter handle, said, with press releases from the club about coronavirus, it looked like the whole players got the wrong email and all self-isolated. <laughs> Comedy of errors from both teams in the first half, but Wyatt took control. Hull looked poor and in, in all departments and could only manage consolation points in the last few seconds. Radford needs to put himself in isolation to keep away from the old faithful who are baying for blood. He didn't get a chance. Um, a two-part here from White Pie who says, um, absolute bag of shite from Hull. Uh, no passion or commitment and made Warrington look much better than they are. If Radford doesn't go after this, then Christ knows how bad they need to be for him to get his P45. And then 30 seconds after I sent my review, Radford parts company with Hull, in quotation yeah. marks. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll allow Lee two reviews on that one because clearly <laughs> they were warranted. Alan Walker said, glad to see called this one off in, following Huddersfield's example. You shouldn't play rugby league when you clearly have the virus. Symptoms include incoherence, stupidity, missed tackles and dicks for fingers. Hashtag stay away. Hashtag wash your fucking hands with soap and water then rinse off the fucking soap. <laughs> uh, Malcolm Matias says, Oh, God. COVID-19 turns feet into hands karma. Luckily, this was behind closed doors and no one in Hull saw it. Let's just say the man of match was snide and walk away slowly. Nothing to see. Keep moving, people. Tom Andrews said, keeping in line with government advice, all the Hull FC players avoided human contact and let Warrington pass and it seemed the fans went into self-isolation at half-time. At least I can have my bed sheets back and Paige will stop stealing the fence paint. <laughs> Oh, how did we know? How did we know it? It'd all be jokes like this, eh? Oh, who, who could have guessed? Tom Eckley says, "Imagine playing so badly at home that occasionally you make an away Warrington team look occasionally competent." <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, whilst I never liked Hull and Radford, the man deserves so much more respect from Pearson than to be sacked by an interview. Proper shit house behaviour. Page said, "Well." What to say? Honest opinion on tonight's match. Warrington were crap. We were just worse. I think some of the players need to get their acts together and sharpish. sharpish. Then there was the aftermatch shenanigans. I'm lost for words. Never seen anything like it, but needs must. Thanks for the memories, Radders. But it's time to move on. Wonder who we'll bring in. Time for a lie down now. Well, you've got plenty of time to think about that. Uh, Cav um, says... Strong rumours initially are on ex-player... Oh, what's his name? Fitzgibbon, isn't it? Is Craig Fitzgibbon the favourite? Craig favorite? Fitzgibbon, yeah. Early days. Oh, well. I think he's doing some sort of coaching on the staff at uh, Newcastle, isn't he? So, yeah, okay. that would make sense. It would. Um, uh, Cav says, go on. Uh, the first 20 minutes of this game were great, and I thought we were in for a cracker. If it wasn't for some cracking... Um, um, cracking something defence Hull could have been in front oh, kick, cr cracking wire defence Hull could have been in front and then the next 20 was a full was a full comedy of errors from both teams although mostly Hull second half Hull went to total shit while wire tightened up great second half performance from uh, Ben Murdoch Masilla King and Austin while Widdup shows flashes of his awesome best 
always in our shadow said well fuck me that was awesome we managed to take a shit wire t- we managed to make a shit wire team look like world beaters in the second half too many players not putting in the effort Shaw not bloody interested how and worst performance in his career only positives Jack Brown and Brad Fash well if they wanted Radders gone they had their wish time to deliver uh, Lee Whitnell says I felt like it was going to take something special for us to break our away hoodoo, and the whole defence looked pretty <laughs> fucking special last night. <laughs> to, to be fair, both teams looked like they'd won a competition to play the k in the first half. In the second, Hull coughed up so much ball, it was impossible for us not to win handsomely. I feel sorry for Radford, but a change feels right for both parties. Joshua's granddad said, possibly the worst 40 seen in years. Both coaches needed to let rip, although it looked like only wire listened. No leadership around the park, only kids showing up. We were dog turd. Uh, Rich Langley says, the game was overshadowed by the post-match news, but it should not gloss over what a terrible game it was. A Warrington will be gutted they didn't run in 50 plus. Can't think of any positive to take out of this from a whole perspective. So let's let's just forget this one and move on to next week. Where there's one positive, Jack Brown continues to look like he could be a decent player. Yeah, and I'd uh, I'd add that I'd uh, support that certainly, Jack Brown. AK Steel 69 said, if Rad if Radford's position was under threat before the game, then the players gave a textbook example of the coup de gras. The number and nature of errors was embarrassing and it wasn't the young players making them. Nobody I spoke to before the game expected FC to win, but the nature of the performance proved and new voices required on the training field. The irony was that Wyatt were fragile. Jack Brown, the only positive. Uh, Steve Pye says, awful. FC poor first half, Warrington not much better, and it seemed like a match nobody was interested in. Second half, another FC collapse, gifting Warrington the easiest half of rugby they'll ever have. Full time, and my mind was made up that a change was needed, although I didn't expect it to happen that fast. Um, hopefully, a new coach will get the best out of this squad, and the season is far from over. It could, could be running for a long while yet. Fat Boy Rob said, My thoughts go out to Scoots, Phil, and the rest of the gang, in brackets, especially Fit Sister, after this one. It's not the first time that they have just given up in the last 18 months. Hopefully it will be the last. The comedy moment of the season was when Superman Danny Houghton had his back turned at the play of the ball. It was probably the final nail in the coffin. Hashtag FSIS. Mm. Something to do with Fit Sister. Uh, yeah. Fit Sister is fit. There you go. Probably. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Putting that little bit aside there, let's before we talk about the news. Yes. Or, um, let's the Lee Radford news. We'll talk about the game in limited detail. I think the whole the whole fans and everyone else there has given us plenty of coverage of, of what went on. Um, let's just say, I mean, it started. The game started with that stupid offload unnecessarily from Tafita Satai on the first carry of the game. Yeah. If I'm right, within the first 10 minutes was when they failed to um, perform the scrum within the shot clock from Hull FC. That was, I'm pretty sure that was in the first 10 minutes of the game. And then obviously there was the um, Danny Houghton not being ready at the play of the ball. There was the Jamie Shaw taking a carry on fifth tackle inside his own 20. There were so many things in this game that just said these players these players aren't at it. Yeah. No, I mean, the, 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 the FC made two mistakes in the first two sets because I think uh, Scott Taylor knocked on with the second, in the second set. Um, it was Josh Bowden. It was Josh, well, it was Josh Bowden, I yeah. apologise. Um, but yeah, it, it, it didn't get any better. It didn't get any better. They were, as somebody said, absolute dog shit. Um, right up there as some of the, one of the worst performances you will ever see on a park from a from a, a team of supposed professionals. Um, yeah, diabolical. Yeah, Jack Brown aside, I don't think, and Carlos Tumavavi, I guess, a little bit. Um, and well done, young Kieran Buchanan, taking the try uh, at the end. You know, he didn't he didn't give up. Uh, the, the young the young winger but other than those guys across the board it it was pretty pretty shocking um certainly Particularly not many like... people played anywhere near their potential in that in that whole FC side and we're talking no. we're not getting anywhere near star players and highlight moments here because we're just talking about how poor whole FC were yeah I was going to say because because I mean you know Wyatt obviously you know 
great home record, diabolical away. 